the Bob Cummings Show. Hold it. I think you're going to like this picture. <laughs> Everybody likes Winston. Winston is America's best-selling, best-tasting filter cigarette. Here's rich tobacco flavor the way you like it. And here's entertainment the way you like it in The Bob Cummings Show. I mean, I just can't believe you really are single. You're so virile and... Handsome, so so prosperous, so... So slippery. <laughs> well, maybe you just haven't found the one woman for you. Well, maybe. You'd really be happy with the right girl. Could be. I've sure had a ball with the wrong ones. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true? Are you really free? Free as the proverbial bird. Care to fly by my nest tonight? I'm a real good cook. Oh, honey, I, I just love it, except I promised to be home for dinner tonight. Oh. Then there is someone who cracks the whip. A sister. <laughs> a sister. Oh, you can do better than that. And I do. <laughs> now, just... Uh, well, I hate to interrupt you, boss, but uh, this might be important. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Schultz. Thanks for reminding me. Tell me, is this boss of yours handing me a line, or is he really an eligible bachelor? Sure. <laughs> sure, he's a bachelor. For shorthand. Yes. Uh, take a letter. Yes, sir. This one. Back to the office and stay there yes, with sir. it. Uh, what's with the Indian sign language? Oh, just uh, squaw talk. Funny, funny. <laughs> <laughs> what time's dinner? Forget it. I don't date married men. I'm single. Single. Dinner's at 8. Better come at 7. I'll be there at 6.45. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> New bending exercises the doctor gave you. Straightens the back. Is she pretty? Disgustingly. <laughs> That's Brother Bob. Oh, well. I've developed a philosophical attitude about beautiful girls. Really? Mm-hmm. I despise them. <laughs> well, then, how Chuck, is that nice? Sensational. Chuck! <laughs> yeah, bending exercises, Mom, for my back. Well, you go home and bend it over your school books. Josie, how would you like to have dinner tonight with two handsome men? Ooh, crazy. Who are they? My brother and my son. Oh, say, Mom, that reminds me. I'm having dinner tonight at Joe DePew's. Well, thanks for telling me. Josie, how would you like to have dinner with one handsome man? Well, I wouldn't count on him either. Why not? Would you care to strengthen your back? He promised he'd be home, and I've got beef stroganoff on the fire. Will you see what he's got cooking? <laughs> We're trying to keep our figures. Really? Mm -hmm. Why? Just for that, I'm glad I'm cooking you a 10,000-calorie dinner. Which I will never eat because I won't be home tonight. 
Bob, you promised. Put it in the refrigerator, Margaret. It'll keep. I've been putting dinners in the refrigerator for two weeks. It's no fun eating alone. Now, listen. I've told you over and over again, there's a cure for this. Here it comes again. The get married routine. Well, it just so happens marriage is the ideal state. Then how come you're still a territory? <laughs> for women, Margaret, not for men. How does a woman get married without a man? She doesn't. She merely convinces some happy bachelor that he'd be better off miserable. <laughs> how? Well, it's extremely simple, Margaret. First, you locate a bachelor who is... Hi, everybody. <laughs> this is almost too perfect. <laughs> Paul Fonda, you... Yeah, happy bachelor, you. <laughs> oh, you old son of a gun. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Winston gives you real flavor, full, rich tobacco flavor. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Uh, well, that's swell. Now, everything's set. Six o'clock, Margaret will have dinner all ready for you, Paul. You sure it isn't an imposition, imposition. Margaret? Imposition? I... Oh, Paul, this girl's been cooking dinner every night for two weeks, just hoping you'd show up. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, there are exactly 14 dinners in our refrigerator. <laughs> Margaret, is that true? Oh, you can count them yourself tonight. And what a night this is going to be, Paul. You know Margaret's cooking. Yeah, <laughs> see you about six, Margaret. <laughs> goodbye. Well, you've done everything else. Say goodbye to him. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Good night, Paul. Okay, 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 good night. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he a wonderful guy? It was nice talking to him. Again, I huh? wouldn't know. I didn't have a chance to get my mouth open. I felt as if I were on the auction block. Here she is, folks. What am I bid for this nearly new, completely equipped woman? Strong, sturdy, would make an excellent wife. And just to prove it's a real bargain, we'll throw in 14 cold dinners. Do I hear a bid? All right. So, to this man of the crew cut. <laughs> <laughs> now look, you know the way to Fonda's heart. Go home and make yourself attractive for him. Put a little gravy behind each ear. Oh, Bob, I am not going home without you. What do you want with me? You're going to go home and explain your ridiculous behavior to Paul. You're coming home for dinner and that's that. Mark, that's so silly. I'm a busy uh, man. Honey, would you... I think maybe you better do as the little woman says. I'm sure she's much better at cooking than I am. Well, she's not the little woman, and it's not your cooking that interests me. <laughs> well, listen here, Bob, darling, it's not for myself that I ask it, but the children miss you. <laughs> Bob Junior, Maggie, Chuck, <laughs> and little Elvis. Elvis? <laughs> I haven't been home for so long, you didn't know about him. Really, how despicable can you get? I'll see you for dinner, dear. Some information for you. Oh, boss. And he's single, Cindy. He's single. Single. Bob, I sure appreciate it, but I could have taken a cab. Oh, forget it, Paul. I had to come home to change anyway. You know, you're not the only guy who's got a gorgeous girl cooking dinner for him tonight. Oh. Of course, Cynthia's not in the same league with Margaret. So the business. <laughs> Paul, imagine those with butter melted on them. Let's go find Margaret. Huh? You have no idea how excited she is that you're here. <laughs> Margaret! Handsome is here! Hello, Handsome! Hello! Who's that? <laughs> oh, always, always joking. Uh, handsome Paul! Handsome Paul who? Great cook, but runs a joke into the ground. <laughs> uh, handsome Paul Revere! <laughs> If you want to wind up in the old North Church, you better get down here. <laughs> Sit down, Paul. Make, make yourself at home. 
Oh, here, boy, put your feet right up on the table. That's it. Uh, you think Margaret will like that? Your feet? Oh, she'll love it. <laughs> All the comforts of home. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. I'll tell you, this this really beats a hotel room, huh, Paul? <laughs> I put my feet up in hotel room. You do? <laughs> Great cook, Margaret, huh? Smell those hot biscuits? <laughs> oh, thanks, Bob. Mm -hmm. Oh, say, your new plane, huh? Yeah, isn't that cute? I, I picked that up to the field yesterday. Say, incidentally, Paul, I, I happened to run into your, uh, your boss, Jameson. Yeah? Gee, he's a funny sort of, um... Well, what has he got against bachelors, anyway? Why, doesn't he like you? No, he, did, he didn't. Oh, well, I, I guess it's not only me, it's just any, uh... Well, now, you take your situation. Now, you've been in line for a big executive job for years, and yet you're still an aerial bus driver. Oh, well, I wouldn't be any good flying a desk. Paul! <laughs> oh. oh, boy, that's not what I hear. Oh, you have all the qualifications for leadership, intelligence, charm, dignity, rare executive ability. True. You think Jameson is discriminating against me, huh? No, I, I wouldn't say, um... Uh... Who, who got the traffic manager's job last year? Jameson's brother-in-law. See what I mean? A married man. <laughs> well, I guess we've just got to face it, Paul. It happens everywhere. Not only in business. Well, well now, you take the government. The, the way they treat a bachelor. Now, a married man in your bracket would pay only half the tax you do. <laughs> And, of course, if you happen to have a son for a deduction, ho, ho, ho. Oh. Oh, well, it's a little late for me to start raising a deduction. Brother, you can say that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what you've got to find is, is a ready-made family. Of course, that's not so... Now, Paul, make sure that the boy is almost grown, you know, with the expensive years behind him. Oh, a boy about 18. Mom, I'm home! Oh, hi, Uncle Bob. Hello, Mr. Fonda. Hello, Chuck. Yes, a boy with a future who can support you now in your, in your declining years. <laughs> well, hi there, Chuck boy. Hi. How's that old pre-med student? Fine. Gonna make a wonderful doctor someday, this boy. Thank you. Mom! Oh, Chuck. Chuck, you know, I was reading some very interesting statistics yesterday. They said that doctors lead all professions when it comes to annual income. Really? Isn't that interesting? <laughs> You'll make a pot full of dough someday, this boy. <laughs> you know, I sure am glad to hear you say that, Uncle Bob, because right now I need $275 for books and tuition. <laughs> hello, Paul. Oh, hello, Margaret. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, your feet? Uh, Not on my nice table. Ma Margaret. <laughs> oh, Paul, let me get you a better ashtray. <laughs> See, I thought you were going to Joe DePuse for dinner. I changed my mind. Well, change it back. Your mom and Mr. Fonda want to be... Hi, Schultzy. Whoa. Oh, hi, Schultzy. What are you doing here? I'm the girl who came to dinner. Margaret, your biscuits were burning. I took them out of the oven for you. Oh, dear. Find dinner someplace else. Paul and Margaret want to be alone. Well, speaking of being alone, Harvey Helm called. He said his wife won't let him go bowling with you tomorrow night. Well, there's a married man for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uncle Bob, if you want to pay the whole six months tuition, it's $500. <laughs> I just thought of something. Jameson is a bachelor. Look at my beautiful biscuits. Can we scrape them or something? Oh, no, they'd kill you. Is that a promise? <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. Cigarette? Thanks. Hey, how come you're smoking my brand? We're sharing now. Remember? Well, then repeat after me. Winston tastes good. Like a cigarette should. <laughs> <laughs> Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Winston gives you real flavor, full, rich tobacco flavor. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Well, there you are, Chuck boy. And as you can see, I put in an extra $10 for you. Oh, boy. Thanks a million, Uncle. Now, Chuck, what is it you're going to do tonight? Well, I'm going to let Mom know how much I want a dad. Mm hmm Subtly. <laughs> Subtly. That's right. And? And I'm going to be very nice and respectful to Mr. Fonda, so he'll want me for a son. Right. And? 
and, and... And you're going to let Mr. Fonda know that you already have the check for the books and the tuition. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> you have I? Yes, Chuck, you have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, Chuck, remember, we're only doing this for your mother's happiness, so she won't be so lonesome anymore. But Mr. Fonda's an airline pilot. He's gone all the time. Chuck, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I met his boss, Mr. Jameson, at the field yesterday, and Mr. Fonda is in for a big executive job right here in L.A. Boy, Uncle Bob, you sure have been working on this. Oh, well, Chuck, I wouldn't say really working. Mr. Fonda and your mom were, were meant for each other. For every woman, there's a man. <laughs> yeah, but I read that there's five million more women than men. <laughs> now that I'm working on. <laughs> Yeah, star. Cynthia's cooking up a nice... Paul, what in the world are you doing? Oh, such a wonderful dinner. The oh, least I can do is come Elba. in here with uh, oh, me. Oh, no, uh, Margaret. Out here, Paul. You sit right down here and relax. Watch television. Anything you want, Chuck will get it for you. Well, Bob, I should help. I... Paul, don't be silly. Learn to live it up like a married man. Be the king. Bob, I'm not a married man. Paul, you want Jameson to give you that executive job, don't you? And you know he doesn't trust bachelors. Bob, I told you, Jameson is a bachelor. Well, why do you think he doesn't trust them? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Fonda, sir, anything I can get for you? Anything you'd like? Just tell me, sir. Uh, no, thank you, Oh, Chuck. but he'll be right here if you need him. Oh, fine boy, Chuck, fine boy. Gonna make some man a wonderful son someday. Uh, aren't you late for your date? Yes, yes, I am. Oh, Margaret, uh, you take good care of Paul. You realize he doesn't know what the joys of home life can be like. <laughs> well, happy <laughs> evening, everybody. <laughs> Gee, Mom, I sure wish I had a dad. <laughs> How much did he give you? Books, tuition, and ten bucks for me. I'm all paid up for the year. That's enough of that. Oh, Paul, I've got to apologize for his behavior. <laughs> really, Bob is just... Margaret, I was wise to him the minute he glad-handed me in the office. <laughs> but I get a kick out of watching him operate. <laughs> well, I don't. Not when I'm the patient. <laughs> oh, what a lovely family group you make. Would that it could always be thus. The foregoing was a paid political announcement. <laughs> Mom, this is nothing to joke about. Uncle Bob's only trying to make you happy. And besides, he paid you ten dollars to help him. Chuck, I'll double it if you'll help us. <laughs> Mom, you're pretty happy, aren't you? Yes, I am, Chuck. But I'll be happier when we think how to get even with your Uncle Bob. It's a cinch, Margaret. He wants me for a brother-in-law? Okay, I'll be the brother-in-law to end all brothers-in-law. Gee, that's a wonderful... But the only thing is, we have no way of telling when he'll come home. Said he had a date with some gal by the name of Cynthia. <clears throat> I think I know the way to allow him to get him back here quickly. <laughs> Shall we adjourn to the telephone? Now, you will be the star, you see. Be... Hello? Is my daddy there? We, we want daddy! daddy. We, we want, want daddy. children! We want children! Daddy. Daddy's trying to photograph the nice lady. We mustn't disturb him. I'm so sorry we bothered you. <laughs> Will somebody do it, little Elvis? Don't you dare. <laughs> I'm sorry we bothered you. I wonder if you'd give my husband a message. Would you ask him to stop by the all-night drugstore and get some formula for little Elvis? Oh, and, and would you ask him to get some pickles for me? I have the strangest craving. We want daddy, we want daddy, we want daddy. Oh, 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 A romantic guy, I. Da 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 Cynthia, oh my darling, you are a vision. <laughs> Just let me look at you. Well, you know, so often anticipation is greater than realization. However, tonight, I have a feeling.
Margaret! Aren't you going to congratulate me? Paul, could I... <laughs> could congratulate you on what? Margaret and I are going to be married. You're kidding. Man, you've got yourself a brother-in-law. Paul, congratulations. I, I tell you, I... I... <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I couldn't be... <laughs> well, you, you like my robe? <laughs> Well, some little snug on me. <laughs> well, that's better. Paul, I don't mind hey, you. Bob, did you hear the news? <laughs> Darling. Baby. Excuse me, where are you going with my shirts? Aren't you going to congratulate me? Yeah, congratulations where you're going with my shirts. Oh, closet. I have to make room in your closet for Paul's things, darling. Baby. <laughs> you, you're moving in? Hmm, we're getting married soon. Why waste money on a hotel? Especially now that I'm not working. Look. <laughs> what do you mean, not working? Oh, <laughs> I wish you could have been here when I called Jameson. I started off with drop dead, and then I really told him all. Drop? <laughs> Paul, you were up for a big executive job. Who needs it? I got it made. Comfortable home, plenty to eat. Margaret's got a nice little nest egg. You're doing great. Kids' tuition is paid for. I'll just lay around here till the right thing comes along. Hey, Uncle Bob, did you hear the news? Yeah, I heard some of it. Where shall I put your bag, Mr. Fonda? Mm, what did you call me? Oh, I'm sorry. Dad. Mm, that's better. <laughs> Just take it up to my room and unpack it, son. <laughs> your room? Oh, I'm sorry, Bob. Our room. Till you get an apartment. Mm. <laughs> oh, I'm moving out. Well, now, look. You're not going to be one of those guys who lives with his in-laws, are you? Bob, dear, you must remember there are three of us and only one of you. I'm going to wash these things for you, darling. Baby. Hey, boss, have you heard the news? Yeah, I heard Mr. it. I heard it. Where's the sewing basket? Oh, right over there. Oh, good. I'll, I'll just let this suit out right now. My new cashmere suit, huh? Well, I gotta have something nice to get married in, Bob. All my clothes are back east. Take a couple of weeks to get them out here. <laughs> and, of course, you want to get married before that. Naturally. Darling. Baby. Darling. See, I think I can help you with this. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Hughes. Uh, give me flight line service, please. Hey, Paul, wait till you see my new plane. Gee, it's great. It cruises at K? Yeah. Say, could you pre-flight my ship, please? No, no, just to Vegas and back. Hmm? Well, they'll be my sister and her, uh, her fiancé. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to get married up there tonight. <laughs> okay, I'll tell her. Oh, I think we'll be at the field in uh, about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Fine, King. Thank you very much. Bye. Bob, uh, we can't get married tonight. They haven't got a license. In Las Vegas, 24 hours a day. Bob! Uh, I'm working tomorrow. You told the boss to drop dead. Oh, yeah, so I did. Uh, boss? I haven't let the suit out yet. Oh, in Las Vegas, they get married by the pool. <laughs> Bob! Could we have a small conference? Oh, certainly. Take all the time you wish. Bob, mm -hmm. uh, we're uh, 
We're ready. Oh, fine. You're, you're going to enjoy this. I'll get the car. I hope you didn't mind our little joke, Cynthia. We were just, just having a little fun. It was uh, sure nice meeting you. The pleasure. Uh, good night, Cynthia. Well, good night, kids. <laughs> and good night, Elvis, wherever you are. <laughs> hey, romantic guy. Uh... <laughs> And now, here's the star of our show, Bob Cummings. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Happy birthday, boss. Schultz, it's, it's not my birthday. The Bob Cummings show is two years old tonight. Those represent 104 <laughs> programs. For a minute, I thought you'd found out my right age. <laughs> We're having a party out on the set. Let's light a couple oh, of candles and join the two gang. Two years. It doesn't seem that long, does it? Let's light a couple of candles, huh? Boy, a lot's happened since we went on the air January 55. Yeah, hmm? let's light a couple of candles. You know, for one thing, our sponsor, Winston, has become the most popular filter cigarette in the world. Why do you think I want to light a couple of candles? They're Winston's. No. Well, for goodness sake. Well, it's easy to see why they're tops in popularity. Right, Annie? Right, boss. Winston tastes good. Like a cigarette should. <laughs> well, good night, folks. We'll see you next week. Hey, let's be selfish and keep it all for us, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Part of Paul Fonda was played by Lyle Talbot and Cynthia by Angie Dickinson. This is Bill Baldwin speaking. Next week's show will be brought to you by Palm Olive Soap. Pretty, 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 prettier than you think you are. And you can prove you are with the Palm Olive Bar. And Halo Shampoo. Hey, look at that Halo look. Hey, look at that whistle clean hair. Hey, look at that Halo look. So fresh, so young, so fair. Yes, hair with a fresh, young Halo look is softer, brighter, whistle clean. With a bright and shining natural beauty, no heavy, oily, soapy liquid shampoo can give you. Look at this simple demonstration. When you mix this soapy liquid shampoo in water, see how cloudy it becomes? You see how it can dull your hair with sticky, dirt-catching film. But Halo, unlike most shampoos, contains no greasy oils or soap. Nothing to interfere with cleaning action or leave dulling film. There, you see that Halo is crystal clear while the soapy liquid shampoo remains cloudy. So in choosing your next shampoo, remember... You get brighter, softer hair and so... Let's call everybody Halo, everybody Halo, shampoo Halo! The Bob Cummings Show has been brought to you by Winston, the easy-drawing filter cigarette that really tastes like a cigarette. Yes, friends, Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Lupino. This is Howard Duff. Look for our new series called... Mr. Adams and Eve. We hope you'll like it. <laughs>